All right, here's the solutions to the chain rule worksheet from today in class. Um, I added a few things that might make this a little bit easier. First of all, I wrote out the chain rule here. One of the more important things to know when using the chain rule is what the chain rule is. Um, another thing I did is I rewrote each of the questions. First of all, I typed them up so that they're a little bit more legible. And then I rewrote them all, kind of color-coded. The idea being that to use the chain rule, you have to figure out what your outside function is and what your inside function is, that is what two functions you compose to get to the question. So what I did is I wrote the outside function, the f of x in this formula, I wrote that in red and the inside function I wrote in blue. So I kind of tried to color code this going down so that it'll be easier to see what I'm doing as I work through these problems. So okay, getting started. This first one, our outside function is cosine. So the first layer that we'll peel away is this cosine out here. The derivative of cosine is negative sine. So this derivative is negative sine of, leave the inside alone. Then you're not done. You still have to multiply this by the derivative of the inside. We took care of the red. Now we take care of the blue. The derivative of the inside is just 2x. So there's your derivative. Um, this guy might look really similar, but it's a little bit different. Now we got, it's the cosine that's being squared, not the x that's being squared. First of all, this notation's a little bit strange. This is how you write this. This might have more intuitive meaning when it's written this way, even though this is the way you'll see it's written. Either way, it's the cosine of x, this entire thing being squared. So the outside function is the squared, so we deal with that first. The derivative of something squared, you bring the two out in front. Leave the cosine of x alone. And then up here, we'd have 2 minus 1. But that's just 1, so we can leave it out. Again, you're not done. We've just taken care of the red part. Now we take care of the blue part. Derivative of cosine is negative sine. If you want to simplify this or maybe write it a little bit neater, maybe bring the negative out in front. You got negative 2 sine of x, cosine of x. All right, moving along. Number three here, our outside function, what we'll deal with first is e to the something. So e to the anything is just e to the anything. So we've taken care of the red, still got to take care of the blue. The derivative of the blue, um, using the power rule, we get 6x over here plus 0. So we can just write 6x. And typically, the way you'll see this written will be like this. These two answers are equivalent. This one is just a little prettier, maybe. Um, this guy down here, I think this is the first one where you have a fair amount of choice in what you call your inside function and your outside function. Um, this is the way I thought about it when I wrote it up. So really, what we're trying to do is take the derivative of e to the x raised up to the negative 1 power. That's why it's down in the denominator. So really the negative 1 part is the outside function and the e to the x is the inside function. So let's deal with the negative 1 first. Um, x to the negative 1. You take the negative 1 down in front and then you subtract 1 from the exponent. That gives you the negative 2. That took care of the outside part. We still got the inside part to deal with. Um, derivative of e to the x is just e to the x. And you can rewrite this guy a little prettier. e to the x to the negative 2 is the same as e to the x squared in the denominator here. And finally, you can cancel out an e to the x from the top and the bottom and get negative 1 over e to the x. Um, maybe I'll leave it for you to do, but another way to approach this problem would be to think about it as the derivative of e to the negative x. Um, the idea going from this right here to this right here is that when you have an exponent raised to another exponent, you can multiply these two guys. So e to the x all raised up to the negative 1 is the same as e to the negative x. So maybe if you look at this, you see the, maybe I should make it red and blue, um, let's see, we're calling blue the inside function. So maybe our inside function here would be this negative x. 
and our outside function would be the E. So maybe it's worth trying it this way on your own and make sure you get back to the same answer that you should get at. I think this way might be a little bit easier. Anyways, moving on. Five and six kind of pair up. Five and six, uh, I put them both on there because really these things are equivalent. It's the same idea when you have an exponent raised up to an exponent, you can multiply these two guys. So e to the x squared is the same as e to the two x. So hopefully the answer to five will be the same as the answer to six. It's kind of interesting though because up in five the e to the x is the inside function whereas in number six it's the two x that's the inside function. So anyways, number five, uh, deal with the outside first. The two, bring it down in front, power rule. Leave the e to the x alone. Maybe I'll put it in parentheses just to emphasize what's going on and subtract one from the squared. So you have up to the first power here, which you don't even have to write. Then multiply that by, you still gotta take the derivative of the inside. Derivative of e to the x is e to the x. If you wanna simplify this a little bit, it's two times e to the x squared which is e to the 2x. Uh, down here, hopefully we'll come up with the same answer. Let's see, our outside function is the e, so we'll take care of that first. e to the anything is e to the anything, but we're not done yet. We still have to take the derivative of 2x. This is a power rule. Derivative of 2x is just 2. So in fact, we do get the same answer for 5 and 6, which is a good thing. Moving on, number seven, outside function again is e to the x. e to the anything is e to the anything. But you're not done yet. You still have to take the derivative of x sine of x. Um, be careful here. This isn't something you can do easily. This requires the product rule. One function is x, the other function is sine of x. So we'll multiply this by the derivative of x, which is just one, times sine of x plus leave the x alone and take the derivative of sine of x, which is cosine of x. Um, don't really need this one, but I don't want to rewrite it all again just to not have the one there to simplify it. But um, this one's a little tricky. Be careful. Here you actually have the product rule inside the chain rule. Um, you'll see things like this a lot more frequently as we get really good with the chain rule. Number eight. Number eight's interesting because it was a question um, on the last homework before we knew the chain rule. So we learned kind of a difficult way to take this problem. Perhaps an easier way to do this problem is, first of all, I hate square roots. Anytime you see a square root, replace it with raised up to the one half power. So the square root of seven x is seven x raised up to the one half power. Now maybe it looks like it fits the chain rule form. The outside function being this one half. So we gotta take care of that first. Bring it down in front and subtract one from the exponent. You get one half times seven x raised up to the negative one half. That took care of the red, now take care of the blue. Derivative of seven x is just seven. So there's your derivative. Um, if you care to, you can make this a little bit simpler. Let's see, we have a seven up top, a two in the bottom from this one half, and then seven x to the negative one half. Um, I guess I could write that like this. Um, and I think that's perfectly fine, but if you really want to simplify, um, you have the seven up top and the seven raised up to the one half power on the bottom. So if you use your uh, exponent rules, you change the seven up top to the square root of seven, leave the two alone, um, and we still have a square root of x on the bottom. Um, so this is equivalent to this. And maybe it's even worth going one step further. Uh, standard is to not have the square root of x on the bottom. I don't really think it's that big of a deal. But the standard would be to multiply this times root x over root x, which would bring the root x up top and make the one on the bottom root x squared, in other words, just x. So really, calculus ends at this step. But if you really want to simplify, these guys are all equivalent. Uh, 9 and 10, as you can see, they're starting to get pretty complicated. The chain rule can get pretty complicated. Uh, here we want to take care of secant first. That's not so easy to do. You might have secant memorized. If you do, that's great. You can just use it. If not, um, 
we can figure out the derivative of secant of x over here on the side. Hopefully I'm leaving myself enough room. So because secant is 1 over cosine, you can think of that as cosine raised up to the negative 1 power. We could have used the quotient rule, but maybe since this is a chain rule worksheet, I'll write it like this just to emphasize that um, it's a good place to use the chain rule. The outside function is the negative 1, so we've got negative 1 times cosine of x raised up to the negative 2. Then you still have to take the derivative of the inside. Derivative of cosine is negative sine. Um, simplifying this guy a little bit, this negative and this negative cancel out. We got sine of x over cosine squared of x. Which sine over cosine is tangent. And that leaves us with 1 over cosine. 1 over cosine is secant. So a lot of side work here just to figure out the derivative of secant is tangent times secant. Kind of interesting. Um, so we can use this knowledge to solve this problem. Derivative of secant is tangent times secant. So to take care of the red part, we'll say we got the tangent of 2x plus 4 times the secant of 2x plus 4. But we're still not done here, right? Um, we've just taken care of the red part. We still have to take care of the blue part. So to take care of the blue part, the derivative of 2x plus 4 is just 2. All right, in number 10, maybe the first thing to do is know that you have a constant out in front, this 2 right here. So there's different ways to approach this problem, but I think the easiest way is to immediately bring it out front, ignore it, and just take the derivative of what's left over. Um, what's left over I rewrote a little bit and put, instead of putting the squared here I moved it out to the outside to emphasize that our outside function is the squared and our inside function is this secant of 2x plus 4. Um, this means the same having the squared here is the same as having it here like I said earlier this way kind of makes more sense but this is the standard way to write it. Um, so anyways we have the 2 from out in front right here now we take care of this squared bring that down in front leave the inside part alone, secant of 2x plus 4. And all that raised up to the 1 power now, which we don't even have to write. But we're not done yet, right? We still have to multiply all this by the derivative of the inside part, this blue part. Um, that's hard to do, but fortunately for us, what's written in blue here is exactly question 9. So we know the derivative of all this blue part was our answer up here to number 9. So times all this stuff. Um, so if we put everything back together, we have a 2, a 2, and this 2. We can call that 8. And then we have a secant of 2x plus 4 and another secant of 2x plus 4. So we can call that secant squared of 2x plus 4. Um, and then finally, this tangent of 2x plus 4. So this guy down here would be our final answer for this derivative to number 10. A couple minor corrections that I wanted to add to this. First of all, we should probably have equal signs in here to show that this is the same as this. And that equals this guy, which equals this guy. Pretty minor there, but wanted to add it. The one other thing, which is actually more of a important typo, I guess. I don't know if people would even care. But really what we're doing here is taking the derivative of all this stuff. We're not taking the derivative of e to the x and then raising it to the negative 1 power. So really, there should probably be an extra set of parentheses out here just to emphasize we're taking the derivative of all this stuff. Um, all right, that's the end of the worksheet. Hope that's helpful.